Hello learners. Welcome to the session of pitch presentations. My name is Sukriti Sachar and I have been an event professional for the last 11 years where I've been working with uh, extremely reputed event organizations in India and then as an independent presentation specialist and event showrunner. Pitching for an event is almost mandatory for every event manager. It is the process uh, from which the client selects the event company that they will work with, that they would like to take their event or activation plan ahead with. And pitch presentations can be limited to just a concept or they can be extremely exhaustive in terms of logistics or the detailing of the event or the activation plan. We are going to learn about the types of pitch presentations you have, how to go about making the basic flow of a pitch presentation and what all is involved in making a presentation to present an idea to the client. Now, what are the different kinds of pitch presentations that you might uh, have to make when you, you know, are an event manager? Uh, you have concept presentations where you're only, uh, you know, talking about the idea, the concept of the event that you want to take ahead uh, for a client. It could also be just a walkthrough. It could be a walkthrough of a venue. It could be a walkthrough of just the hotel. So just basic logistics PPTs. Um, it could also be a recce report. So when you go to a location, to just do a recce of that location for a particular event and then you have to talk to the client about the pros and cons of that particular venue you make a recce report with all the photographs and all the details about that venue then of course you have something called an event pitch which again could be a long presentation or a really short presentation depending on how you decide to present it so that is an entire event or activation pitch presentation. And the last one I have is RFPs. So these are requests for proposals. Uh, a lot of clients uh, might take out like tenders for events. So here in RFPs, there are a few more things that you have to share with the client uh, along with the idea and how you're going to execute it and the 3D designs and everything. There's a bit of uh, a bit more of that uh, information that they require in an RFP. It's a more official process, right? Now, when you make a pitch presentation, what are the different kind of approaches that you can take? So when I think of making a pitch presentation for an FMCG brand, or uh, say I want to do an activation for a shaving cream brand, right? Now, an activation plan can be, uh, you know, it can be approached in different ways. One, it can be about who is my TG. So I can divide my presentation into TG wise ideas. So I can say it's about young men or it's about office going men, or if it's about, uh, you know, women's shaving cream, then it could be for women. Uh, so who is it that I'm targeting, right? And so my presentation can be divided as per that. The next way that I can look at it is a touch points based um, plan where I say that, okay, you know, the young people that I want to target, I will find in colleges uh, or schools. Uh, the other places that I can go to is maybe shopping hub areas, or I can go to uh, areas which are like, you know, so you have clubs and you have shopping hubs, you have, uh, office complexes, you also have housing societies. So what are these touch points that I can cover in my plan? I could even divide my presentation as per the touch points. Another way of doing it would be if I say that, okay, my activation plan has four weeks in it. So initially maybe it's just like a teaser phase. Then I get into actual, uh, execution of that plan and the last week is amplification so i can make it week one week two week three week four or it could just be four days activation so day one day two day three 
so it could be a day wise or a week wise itinerary right uh, this also holds true for events guys so um, and the fourth is ideas so if i have four ideas right i i have a technology idea i have a flash mob idea and uh, you know and maybe i just have a um, a street act idea so i have these three ideas that i want to do uh, so i could divide my presentation just idea wise and under those ideas when i'm explaining those ideas i can mention who the idea is for what are the touch points that i'm going to cover with that idea so all of these details will still get covered in it so they will still uh, come under every uh, under the entire plan you will still have pgs you still have touch points that you will go to you know you talk about the week wise or day wise plan and of course you will talk about the ideas but which approach you are going to take which approach makes it easy for the client to understand what you are trying to say is what you have to decide beforehand i've just given you an example of an activation plan but it works the same way for events as well for events also say you have an event which is for employees and distributors so you could do it pg based could be uh, or you have vips and employees right so you could do your pg based could be two different pgs could be vips and employees the next could be when you say touch points based it means that you are what are you doing at the hotel or you what are you doing in the garden so different touch points you know or when they are arriving and then when they come to uh, registration so all of these are touch points based day wise itinerary could work in like if you were doing a mice ppt uh, or like an off site presentation so you have day 1 day 2 day 3 of the off site employees off site and that's why you want to uh, kind of explain the ideas for each day and idea wise is it works the same you have different ideas and you just explain them like accordingly so you decide you you think about the approach that you want to take for your presentations now when you're making a pitch presentation uh, as a company who all are involved who is involved in making a pitch presentation you have a concept team or a client servicing team sometimes they work uh, together sometimes only the concept team is making a presentation sometimes only the client servicing team is making the presentation so it depends on the company's organizational structure really then you have a creative team that's making your 2d or 3d graphics then you have an operations team or a production team then you have finance and procurement so in totality all of these people are working together to bring about an entire pitch presentation right they all have to work in tandem with each other so when you get a brief from a client uh, usually a concept or client servicing team would sit together and they, they would brainstorm about what is the idea that they want to go ahead with what is the theme of the event that they want to go ahead with if the client has not shared a theme you know uh, they come up with a theme or from the brief that the client has given they evolve to a theme right so they think of the theme they get a theme rationale going which means a concept note for example right so if they have a, a a sustainability based theme they want to put in a few lines before that to explain to get to that theme right then uh, they talk about the event flow so what is the event going to be like from the moment that uh, people are supposed to be invited till the time that they go back so pre event till post event they think about what this flow is going to be like so how does the person who is coming for the event feel from the beginning till the end of it right uh, they also think about other activities so you have uh, sometimes in conferences you have something called uh, uh, breakers like so if you are doing a lot of uh, sessions with speakers in in the middle of those they do some energizer breakers so they do some activities to get the audience going back again to pick up the momentum again right so those activities then they also have to look for reference designs so sometimes to share with the creative team or if you do not have enough time 
um, and you really have to get back to the client as soon as possible, you end up looking for reference designs for the theme that you have thought of. So what is your registration desk going to look like? What is your entrance going to look like? What is your set design going to look like? Um, if only for the invite, what is the invite going to look like? So those kind of reference designs, if you can find. Also, along with actually designing the presentation, there is some research work that goes into it, right? So if you have decided to put in a few artists or speakers, for example, or even giveaways, or some technology that you want to use, you have to research for all of these things. So the concept and clients of Sinti would sit together or even uh, involve the production team for technology, you know, and they would think about what are these uh, new things that they can include in the presentation. And even if they're putting in artists or speakers, they have to go back and research, bring out write-ups about them so that they can introduce them well to the client right then once you have all of these things with you you start designing the presentation right you also coordinate with the creators and the production team so the creative team will make the theme logo for you they will do the 2d graphics for you so you know if they're making like registration desk um giveaways so you know you have a notepad or you're doing so different kind of banners or anything like that they're doing 2D and 3D also, they create that for you. So uh, clients are seeing or concert team would uh, coordinate with them for that. And your production team helps you with all the logistics for the venue. They do recce of the venue. They come back to you with the pros and cons of that place, right? Uh, they also can get you cost for the entire event. So once you have made the entire plan, they give you a cost for it. Um, they can also they also get in touch with vendors for various activities or technology that you plan to propose to a client uh, and in layouts extremely helpful because the production people the production team has uh, uh, amazing insights into how uh, parking manpower you know just a lot of practical knowledge just on ground um, insights that they have that need to be included into presentation is it, it comes from production team. Now, like I initially said, requests for proposals sometimes have uh, extra things that they need. Uh, for uh, R RFPs and tenders, usually companies also involve their finance or procurement department. So finance department is kind of able to negotiate on that bit, right? So all of these people are involved in designing one pitch presentation. But please, like not every pitch presentation is this extensive, right? But if it is a big event and you really want to kind of go full out, uh, this would ideally be um, the process of actually going about it. Now, in terms of flow of the PPT, right? I put down all of these points for you. Um, usually when you have a first meeting with a client, like there might be clients that you've worked with a lot of times. There might be clients that you're working with for the first time ever, right? So if you're working with the client for the first time ever, it makes sense to take a showreel with you or a few credential slides. So the portfolio of the company or the work that you've done before, the awards that you've won, right? So it makes sense to start your presentation with an introduction to yourself or your company and go from there. You would see a uh, foot in the door actually means uh, what I've mentioned here means if you're kind of, if you're meeting the client for the first time, or if it's like a, if it's a moonshot kind of an event, a foot in the door situation is where you just kind of block a position for yourself and you say, we're here, we're here to present, you know? So initially when you are, when you present a show reel and just wow them with it, uh, it's a great start. Then we move on to the brief. So the brief actually comes from the client or sometimes you can also send them like a questionnaire of what you want to know about the event. So what you might want to know is what is the number of people uh, who are attending the event? What is the profile of the people who are uh, attending the event? What is the final objective that the client wants from the event? 
right? So there are a few questions that you can ask them in order to integrate those kind of ideas, right? So when they send you a brief or whatever you are able to understand from them, you put that down in the presentation. So you say that, you know what, this is the brief in a nutshell. So th these are slides from a, a distributor event. So if we can, uh, uh, sorry, dealer and employee event. So this is the brief that came from them. All of this is what we had to come up with, right? And it could also just be as simple as this, where it's not too extensive, right? You just say it's going to be Delhi. This is the venue. These are the dates. And then you move on with the presentation, right? So it could just be something as simple as this, right? Now, let's get into, once you've told them what the brief, you get into, okay, uh, now we want to talk about the theme of what we're presenting to you for the event. So in order to get to the theme, it's always, uh, preferable to have a concept note to go with it. Now, a lot of people just put the concept note on one slide, uh, but I have always felt that you, if you're making um, slides with just words, the impact is very, very minimal. You know, In order to make it impactful, you should use uh, pictures that enhance what you're trying to say. So something like this, where you're able to actually put down the concept note along with imagery that totally you know blows your mind you should try and do that so it is now time to create and then you reveal the big idea so right before this big reveal we had the theme uh, rationale and then we go into the theme reveal so you reveal the logo of what you're trying to, of the event that you're trying to propose. A lot of times, uh, companies are also uh, wanting to showcase the graphic language that they will use in the event after, right after the logo. So if they have uh, proposed this particular logo for the event, what they also want to try and show is the graphic language that they will follow in the event right after this so you know something like this where they show okay these are the kind of graphics that you will see across the event right then we get into the event or activation module so what is a module it's it's basically like i said the approach right so you decide on what kind of module are you going to do are you going to do a touch points based module tg based module or however um, for this particular one, we had it as pre-event and main event only because it was only that simple. It could have been pre-event, main event, post-event. It could have also been day one, day two, day three. It could have also been employees, dealers. So it could be any of those things, but this is, this means the approach. So what is the approach to this pitch presentation? So. Once I showcase, okay, this is the event module, and then you get into talking about the module in detail, right? So once you said, okay, this is the module I'm following, now let's get into the module. And so if you saw this, we said, okay, I have this module, but now I'm going to talk about my pre-event, right? And once I say pre-event, I get into what all is it that I'm going to do before the event? So I'm going to send them an invite. There is going to be an event app. Um, I'm going to talk about the technology that I'm also including in the, in the invite. Then when they come to the event on the arrivals, what's going to happen, right? So my event has not started yet, okay? My event has not started yet, but this is, so all of this is before the event, pre-event. So they do a hotel welcome and all of that, right? And then you get into the main event part. So I say, you know, I'm done with my pre-event bit. Let's get into main event. And there, now in main event also, you have different touch points. So you have pre-function area, you have main event area, 
you also have an f and b area if you're doing any activate uh, you know activity there or you're putting up special branding there so you could have that as a separate area as well so you put pre function area and then you showcase what branding you have there or any activity that you put in there for people right now in terms of layouts you can also do layouts initially when you're showing the brief and the venue there uh, you could put in layouts there but i've always seen that it's better to put the layout of the exact place that you're talking about at that time right so now that i've come to main event area already it makes sense for me to so i've come to main event area and now it makes sense for me to put the conference hall layout here so now i can show them now that i've come to the main event area this is the layout of that area you know and so if this is for 16th march this is for 18th march because there are two different events that i'm doing and then you get into set design a lot of times uh, another way of doing this is you have your layout from the top and then you even have your set design from the top so people usually put in the layout on the first side then the top view of the set design and then they come to this view you know front view now in set design there's a few things one is of course the creative element of how the set looks right but sometimes people also want to know the client also wants to know uh, what are the dimensions exactly what is the screen size and all of those things and so you put in so while this is the creative view of the set design and how my content will be displayed these things show the exact measurements of what my screen size is if there is a delay screen you know all of those sizes so that the client knows exactly how big the content will be how much is the distance between uh, the audience and the screen and what is the material that i'm using also right okay and then you go into the actual flow of the event after you show the set design now in this flow of the event like if you see uh, as the people walk in the rfid bands enable us to project their photographs on screen so this starts with the moment that people walk into the main event area so before this we spoke about pre event area which means people have come into the venue they are doing registrations they are getting engaged in the pre event area then they move into the main event area where the first thing they, that happens is the rfid technology puts their photographs on the screen and then there is a voice voice over that cues the opening av and eventually from there the event flows so you have speakers and presentations all of that so all of that gets uh, you know shown like this so you can even show it with uh, just set design having different renders for each of those things or you could just have simple slides saying uh, this is a speaker that's going to come or if you have like a special guest speaker coming in you could have slides for that now once you've done your main event flow like it's happened from the beginning till the end the mc thank you has happened um we put in something called peripherals now a lot of times people try and include these things in the main event flow itself but my experience says that these things change the conversation from the actual event flow to these things so for example um, you know you're talking about uh, this is my set design and you know the mc welcomes the first speaker and then you put in the mc options you know uh, the conversation in the meeting could have been okay the set design you know looks great or this is to be changed or whatever and then you're talking about the event flow and suddenly the con conversation shifts to who is the mc most of the times you will be taking your with yourself mc options or artist options you know um and there will always be a conversation about these options so i feel that in order to not break the chain of the event flow you should 
put them in peripherals later as like together as a group you should put them after you've spoken about the event flow unless your mc is somebody really really important to the uh, to the flow of the event so if you were doing like a, a fireside chat with a celebrity and that's the mc you're talking about then you should put it in the event flow or for example there is an artist uh, or an entertainment act uh, that leads into the launch of an event or uh, uh, launch of a product or leads into the opening av playing then it becomes an integral part of the event and that's when you should put it along with the event flow itself right uh, similarly if you have energizer activities that you're doing with your client or you're sending out mementos you can put them all later in one you know group of slides so something like this where i put in artist options together so you put in you know different artists together you have engagement ideas so if you have a lot of speakers you want to do uh, breakers uh, with your audience to keep the momentum going so then you show them the acts or any energizers that you plan to do with them right then we get into the logistics part of it now with the idea with the theme rationale with the set design and everything you've shown the creative rendition of the event you've shown what you can do with that brief bring an idea and how to showcase the creative side of the idea but now it's time to talk about the practicality of it the actual logistics of it right so this section which you can also call an appendix uh, because it has a lot of documents along with it so you know it could be uh, so what is going to be your man part plan you have a lot of uh, customers so how are you going to do the f and b how are you going to do the parking bit uh, how are you going to have uh, your security placed if you have vvips coming what is their movement plan what are the lounges they are sitting in so all of these things come under logistics also for rfps you might need things like your organization structure um so just for example you have like reporting schedules that you can put in fnb plans your housekeeping plan so all of these things go under logistics this is where the production team also helps you uh, production or operations team helps you uh, so something like this in an organization structure it could also just be a team structure the team that you plan to put on for, for this particular event uh, because the client might want to know what is the strength of the team that's going to be working on this particular event and then you have a recap slide i cannot emphasize enough on the importance of a recap slide so you know we when you choose your module so you said okay day one day two or you said pre event main event whatever is that module that you choose the approach that you choose you have to have a recap with it and it's better to put thumbnails of the creatives that you made uh, so that there is a recall value now what a recap slide really does is guys that when you've made an entire presentation when somebody has gone through a presentation that might be short or really really long they've seen a lot of ideas right they've seen different different ideas in different locations of the entire venue but what a recap slide does is it brings together all of those ideas and it says this is why it works under this theme you know so we have a theme and then we've given you 10 ideas but this recap slide tells you yes this is why this entire plan works together even in activations you might have four different ideas at five different locations but when you make a recap slide and you show you know in these four weeks we're going to touch base with these many people at these locations with these ideas it gives that entire approach a very umbrella feeling it makes it whole you know so you have to have a recap slide you have to have one so this is my recap of the flow pointers that i told you just remember that all of these things might not always be part of your presentation but this is like an overall idea right um, you have to uh, you might have some of these you might have all of these but this is a good uh, sort of uh, you know benchmark to go with when you're making a pitch presentation
Now, a few things that I feel you should remember when you're deciding to make a pitch presentation is, one is that you have to have low and high points. Like if your entire event only has high momentum points, then it, those high points don't feel like they're high points. They feel like they're all at the same level, you know? So you have to have moments when it's a bit low and then suddenly there has to be moments which are like extremely, you know, really high points. So uh, extremely high in momentum so that it takes the momentum of the event uh, from emotional to dramatic, uh, you know, uh, but it has to have those subtle moments in between for that emotional moment to be really impactful. You know, if you have everything at the same level, uh, it is not that impactful. So try and create high and low points both. And if you don't, if you do not have the time or uh, the team does not have the bandwidth at that point, to create uh, customized designs uh, for your ideas, it is always a great idea to take reference videos with you. So if you're trying to showcase a technology, it's better to take a reference video of that technology. Uh, if you're doing uh, showcasing some artists, some innovative artists, uh, you should definitely take their videos with you, even for designs. So if you were show, uh, trying to do something really creative with your entrances or some kind of art installation, and you're not able to create a custom design, it's better to take a reference design with you, right? And like I said, you should maintain the flow and keep the peripherals for later. Anything that has a lot of options in it, try and keep them for later, right? Uh, so that it does not disturb when you're presenting the flow of the event. I would say try and keep the animations to a minimum, like they're only distractions unless they're absolutely important. Uh, if you have to use animations, keep them really subtle, you know, use fades or float in or something like that, but try and keep them to a minimum. Transitions are a great idea. Transitions look subtle. Like uh, if you use subtle transitions, it can be nice and interesting to use them. Um, Please follow a consistent graphic language. Like if one presentation has three different modules, like so you had pre-event, main event, post event, but maybe pre-event, uh, they all have to have a similar, a consistent graphic language. But here's the thing. If you were doing like say an employee offsite, you were doing day one, day two, day three, and each day had a different theme. I would say you can actually have three different looks for each day. So you can do day one can have different graphics to it. Day two can have uh, maybe different colors or graphics to it. So that that particular day's graphic language is different from day two. But please remember to follow that graphic language in all of day one slides. Remember to follow the day two graphic language in all of day two slides. So remember to do that. If not, just have one consistent graphic language, that is all right also. But that consistency makes that entire deck look like it look look like it uh, one one presentation, you know. Declutter, you know, uh, just uh, if you're planning to use shapes, every shape that your slide has has to have a utility. I always say that uh, you should not have shapes on your slide only for decorative purposes. Um, Keep it as clean as you can. Even if you're using imagery, make it um, such that it becomes a part of your slide. It becomes one with your content, you know. Uh, so try and not clutter the slides. Um, even if you're working with color, try and use it smartly. Uh, that would be my suggestion. Thank you so much for being part of this session, learners. Thank you.